I think our two sections really complement each other with the sort of work that we do. We're almost at a point now where we really don't go to a job unless the dog operations unit are coming along as well. The, the working relationship that we've had with Tron, as Dale said, over the last two years, we have both sort of know our, our positions and what we should be doing and things like that. And it's very rare now that we find that the actions of somebody who's not a dog handler interferes with what the dog handler's doing. You know, they know where we are, where we fit in, what we can do, what we uh, can offer and they all try and work around that. We've got some good systems in place now in relation to how we set up when things are going down and it, it when it's coordinated from Trident generally or Dale more so, um, it, it just works well. Look, if we're coordinating a response to something dynamic that's happening at the time and we've got the dogs there's a general reluctance amongst our clientele to, to run, um, to fight, to do any of that sort of um, erratic behaviour. I mean, even just having the dog as a presence sometimes is enough, or even just having the dog car. I mean, most of our clientele know what cars we get around in. Just having that on standby um, can act as a deterrent. But in terms of having the capabilities of the dog for an offender who isn't willing to give up, um, it's invaluable. There's been countless times where an offender's run off into the bush and then we've got the, the dog on ready to go um, and then we're back on and it normally results in an apprehension. 90% of the situations we deploy, we always give people the opportunity to surrender. Okay, we, we don't just willy-nilly go out there and, and bite people, that, that's not what our dogs do. The real reason the dog is used is for the apprehension. It's important that we actually get results in a, in a timely manner, you know, so that people can get back on with their life because it's a massive thing for somebody to have their house broken into, property stolen, car stolen, you know, that, that they, they can no longer get to work normally, you know, and let alone the fear that somebody's been inside their house, that, that, that the anxiety that creates. Um, and that's, we, we love chasing people with our dogs, but the, the bigger picture is that I think we, that close liaison and what we do, we're, we're doing our best to keep the community safe. And I mean, I think we said it before, um, you can get anything done when you've got the right amount of numbers and, and the right people doing it. And I think between the two sections, I think it's safe to say that we, we go above and beyond often what's expected of us and we get the, the results that are really hard to get. And I think sometimes uh, the public forget that, that the people that we're dealing with um, most of them don't want to be arrested, they don't want to be held accountable for the crimes that they've committed and some of them will do anything that it takes to get away. Between the two sections and, and that relationship that we've developed, that's something that we've almost fine-tuned. We're doing it safely without, you know, damage to property, without people getting hurt, um, unnecessarily hurt anyway. Um, and we're doing it day in, day out.